my sunshine. Bless you, Gabriel, for blessing us this morning. Good morning. Good morning. Welcome to Pathway Global Methodist Church. Thank you for choosing to join us in worship today, whether it's in the sanctuary or online. My name is Judy Thompson, and I am your worship greeter this morning. I'd like to share a scripture with you. It's from Romans chapter 6, verses 12 and 13. Do not let sin control the way you live. Do not give in to its lustful desires. Do not let any part of your body become a tool of wickedness to be used for sinning. Instead, give yourselves completely to God, since you have been given new life. And use your whole body as a tool to do what is right for the glory of God. Our first hymn this morning is the, Resur the Day of Resurrection. It's on page 303. We'll be singing verses 1 through 3. Please stand if you are willing and able. Join me in the Nicene Creed. It's on page 880, or you may follow along on the screen in front of you. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth and all that is, seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord, Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten, not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made. For us and for our salvation, he came down from heaven, was incarnate of the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and became truly human. For our sake, he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day, he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. 
He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead, and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life, who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in the one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Pastor Dan, the senior pastor here, and I am really glad you've chosen to worship with us today. And God sure gave us a beautiful day to gather to worship, didn't he? It's just gorgeous outside. And I hope after we worship and after we brunch together, uh, uh, there's a brunch after the service. I hope you'll join us for that. After that, get outside and enjoy this beautiful world that God gave us. So I hope you can get out there and enjoy it today. This time I ask that you turn your attention to the screens for this morning's video announcements, and I pray that you'll get involved in the ministries and programs and events happening here at the church and invite your neighbors, your family, your friends to join you as well. But at this time, let us watch this morning's video announcements. Good morning, everyone. Happy Sunday. Thank you so much for choosing to worship with us here at Pathway. We are so glad that you're with us. If it's your first time worshiping with us, we have something called a connection form found in the pew back in front of you, or we have it on our website. That's just so we can stay connected with you and get you plugged in. If you or a loved one is in need of prayer, this is for anyone, go ahead and fill out one of those cards found in front of you as well. We pray over you guys as a staff every single week. We just have a few announcements before we get started. And the first... Just want to remind all of our pre-K through fifth grade friends that we have Spark Kids Club this Thursday at 6 o'clock. And for all of our middle school and high school friends, we have Stoke Youth Group from 7 till 8.30 tonight. Also, I want to remind all of our middle school and high school friends that if they want to join us for April Insomnia, we need registrations into that by tomorrow. If you have any questions on it or would like more information, reach out to me as quickly as you can. It's going to be a great event for us and a bunch of other area churches getting together with our students and just having a great time. It is not too late to sign up for Women's Retreat. It's coming up this next weekend, but you can still register. We want as many ladies with us as possible. Go ahead and head to our website or Miracle Camp's website to register. This is a full weekend full of fun, fellowship, worship, and growing. And we just want to pack out the place if we can. We can't wait to be with you guys. On April 28th, as part of the service at the 9 o'clock, uh, Jim Krause is going to be performing excerpts from The Good Shepherd. Uh, it should be an amazing time with some great music. We hope to see you there. Uh, again, it should be a beautiful worship experience for us all. We are looking to grow our funeral luncheon team. We actually have a funeral luncheon coming up this next Saturday, and you can sign up for that through an email from the office through sign up. And you can see through the website what has already been signed up for, what jobs people are going to be doing. Um, but the more hands, the lighter the work, right? And so we would just love to grow this team. Basically, luncheons are here to just help people for those who are grieving. And we love to provide this as a church family, um, whether you're providing food or you're being here as a server or cleaning up afterwards. There are so many different ways to help. If you have any questions about that or just want to have a conversation, go ahead and contact me. Some of you may have already noticed an email that came last Friday from the office with a Google form in it. This form is just for contact information and it is just for our offices and admin purposes only. We are going through our system and completely updating everyone's contact information, making sure everything is correct so we can get you guys the information you guys want and need. 
um, please fill out this form. We need every single person to do it, whether you fill it out in your email or if we don't have the correct email or you don't wanna do it on email or you don't have one. We also have physical forms found at the welcome desk out in the lobby. And then there is a box that you can place that in afterward. Again, this is just for our office because we're updating it and making sure it's super clean, simple, and correct. And we thank you in advance for filling that out. Lastly, we've said this a few times, but we could really use some more help at our sound desk, running slides, running the sound board, running the camera. Uh, this not only helps our in-person worship on Sundays, but also for the videos that we post every single week. If that seems like a place where you feel like you would like to get plugged in and get trained in, uh, let me know, let Savannah know, let Dan know, let Scott Risk know. There are so many people that would love to get you plugged in uh, so you can just help us make our Sunday services as amazing as they are. Now that's enough announcements. It's time to worship together. I show of hands, raise your hand if you're looking for your contact info. <laughs> Sorry, the first link didn't work, but uh, we've got that corrected, and so you can fill that out online. And, and there are forms back there at the Welcome Center desk if you want to just do it by hand and fill it out. But we are trying to update everyone's contact information because we want to keep in touch with you. We want to send you birthday cards and anniversary cards, and we need to know that information and stuff like that. We want to be the most caring church you know, we call ourselves brothers and sisters in Christ. We are a family of God, so let's treat each other like family. Let's love each other, and let's be there for each other through, through the good times and the bad. Let's worship together. Let's grow in Christ together. Let's serve together, and let's be there for each other when things are tough. So uh, if you can fill that out, it takes about two or three minutes to do, and we hope you'll do that. Let us continue now to worship the Lord. We're going to be singing um, Christ is Alive. It's on 318 in your hymnals. We're going to sing verses 1 through 5, or you may follow along with the words on the screen. Let us bow our heads and let us pray. Father God, we are grateful that you are a God that is, just not, that is not just up in heaven, wherever that may be, millions, billions, trillions of miles away, but you are present, you are here. You care about your creations, you created this world and now you sustain this world and, and you provide for us and, 
and you look after us and care for us like a father uh, looking after his children. You care about what we're dealing with, what we're going through, what we're thinking, what we're feeling, and we are grateful for that. So I pray, God, that we would spend time with you every day, sharing with you our thoughts, our feelings, our struggles, confessing our sins to you, asking for healing for ourselves, or asking and praying on behalf of our family, our friends, and loved ones. God, we just thank you for being a God who loves, who cares, who provides. We are also grateful that you are an all-powerful, all-knowing, ever-present God. You can take care of situations that we can't take care of. You give us wisdom that we uh, do not have, and you allow us to tap into your wisdom in order to figure out the best decisions to make, Lord, as we confront different things in our lives. And Lord God, I pray today that as we worship you, that we would connect to your spirit, that we would sense your presence here, that you would fill us with your presence, that you would fill us with your love and your grace and your mercy and your truth and your wisdom and your strength and power. Let us leave this place filled with, a whole, filled with the Holy Spirit, ready to live the Christian life you've called us to, ready to love everybody around us, ready to do as much good as we can for as long as we can for as many as we can, striving to be a blessing to those around us, to be a blessing to this world, to, and striving to let people see Jesus Christ in us. And God, I do pray that you would bless this church, bless all the ministries and the programs that go on here, help us to grow our worship numbers, help us to grow our children and youth ministries, our music ministries, our men and women's ministries, our small group ministries, our sports ministries, everything that goes on here, God, we pray your blessing upon it all and we pray God that you would use us to reach as many people for Jesus Christ as we can use us to help as many people grow in their faith use us to serve this community and this world may we be your hands and your feet your heart your voice may we bring the love and light and truth of Jesus Christ to this community and to people all over this world and God we know we're not perfect so we pray, God, that you would come and forgive us of all of our sins and, and come and dwell inside us and make us more and more like your son, Jesus Christ, every day. Help us to strive for holiness, righteousness, and perfection. And God, we thank you for loving us so much, too, that you sent your son, Jesus Christ, into this world to come and be the savior of the world, to teach us the ways of God, to show us how much you loved us, and eventually, Jesus, you went to the cross and died for our sins so that we could be saved, so we could be adopted in your family, become citizens of the kingdom of heaven. And for all of that, Lord Jesus, we say thank you. Thank you for your life, your teachings, your death, your resurrection, and thank you for the gift of the Holy Spirit. And Jesus, we also thank you for the gift of prayer and for teaching your followers how to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins, as we forgive those who sin against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory forever. Amen. Now enjoy the special music piece sung by our chancel choir.
you, choir, for that wonderful reminder that Christ is risen. I don't know about you, but I love the Easter hymns, and, uh, and I don't know if you know, but Easter's more than just one day in the church calendar. It is a season. It goes from now till Pentecost, so you're going to hear us sing a lot of Easter hymns over the next few weeks, and I hope you enjoy them. Um, I know I will, <laughs> and I hope you do as well. Well, today we're going to begin our Jonah series. For the next several weeks, we're going to be studying the book of Jonah and uh, seeing what we, what we can learn from Jonah and his whole story and his adventure and all of that. So I'd like to begin by reading the scripture passage to you. Um, we're going to read Jonah chapter 1, verses 1 through 17. And it says this. The Lord gave this message to Jonah, son of Amatai. Get up and go to the great city of Nineveh. Announce my judgment against it, because I have seen how wicked its people are. But Jonah got up and went in the opposite direction uh, to get away from the Lord. He went down to the port of Joppa, where he found a ship leaving for Tarshish. He bought a ticket and went on board, hoping to escape from the Lord by sailing to Tarshish. But the Lord hurled a powerful wind over the sea, causing a violent storm that threatened to break the ship apart. Fearing for their lives, the desperate sailors shouted to their gods for help, and they threw the cargo overboard to lighten the ship. But all this time, Jonah was sound asleep down in the hold. So the captain went down after him. How can you sleep at a time like this, he shouted. Get up and pray to your God. Maybe he will pay attention to us and spare our lives. Then the crew cast lots to see which of them had offended the gods and caused the terrible storm. When they did this, the lots identified Jonah as the culprit. Why has this awful storm come down on us, they demanded. Who are you? What is your line of work? What country are you from? What is your nationality? Jonah answered, I am a Hebrew, and I worship the Lord, the God of heaven, who made the sea and the land. The sailors were terrified when they heard this, for he had already told them he was running away from the Lord. Oh, why did you do it? They groaned. And since the storm was getting worse all the time, they asked him, what should we do? What should we do to you to stop the storm? Throw me into the sea, Jonah said, and it will become calm again. I know this terrible storm is all my fault. Instead, the sailors ro rowed even harder to get the ship to the land. But the stor stormy sea was too violent for them, and they couldn't make it. Then they cried out to the Lord, Jonah's God. O oh Lord, they pleaded, don't make us die for this man's sin, and don't hold us responsible for his death. O oh Lord, you have sent the storm upon him for your own good reasons. Then the sailors picked Jonah up and threw him into the raging sea, and the storm stopped at once. The sailors were awestruck by the Lord's great power, and they offered him a sacrifice and vowed to serve him. Now the Lord had arranged for a great fish to swallow Jonah, and Jonah was inside the fish for three days and three nights. My brothers and sisters, this is the word of God for the people of God. And we know God's word is holy, it is true, and it can be trusted. Well, like I said, today we're going to begin our series on Jonah. And the first question I want to answer or to address is, who is Jonah? Well, Jonah is a prophet in the nation of Israel. He was from Gath Hefer in the northern kingdom of Israel. Jonah ministered and prophesied during the reign of Jeroboam II, who reigned over Israel roughly 790 to 749 B.C. So Jonah walked this earth 7,500 to 7,800 years ago. I'm sorry, 2,750 years ago to 2,800 years ago, he walked this earth. And let's ask another question. What did God ask Jonah to do? In Jonah 1-2, God tells Jonah, get up and go to the great city Nineveh and announce my judgment against it because I have seen how wicked its people are. So Jonah is basically asked to go to Nineveh and pronounce God's judgment upon it. 
But what does Jonah do? He disobeys God and he hops on a ship going the opposite direction of Nineveh. Now the big question I want to ask today is why? Why was Jonah so against going to Nineveh? Well, if you don't know, Nineveh was the capital city of the Assyrian Empire. And the Assyrian Empire was an enemy to the nation of Israel. So I think that's one major reason why he didn't want to go. And let me just share a little history, some of the history between Israel and, and Assyria. In 853 B.C., 11 kings, including King Ahab of Israel, joined forces to fight against the king of Assyria at the Battle of Karkar. That battle ended in a stalemate. Over the years, the kings of Assyria continued to attack and to expand the borders of their kingdom. And for many years, the Israelites watched the Assyrian Empire get stronger and stronger and their borders moving closer and closer to the nation of Israel. Then in 841 B.C., Shalmaneser, the king of Assyria, he defeated King Haziel, of uh, the king of Aram, and he took everything from him except for the capital city of Damascus. And the king of Aram was basically locked into his city and under siege and had no power control over his kingdom. The Assyrians took over the Aramean Empire. It was also in 1841 that Jehu, king of Israel, paid a large tribute to Assyria to keep them from attacking Israel. The Bible mentions this. And there's also been a black obelisk found in Nineveh with King Jehu bowing before the king of Assyria and offering his tribute to him. Something else you should know is that the Assyrians, they were very brutal to their enemies. There are pictures of the Assyrians stabbing many Israelites through with long spiky poles. Thus depicting that the Assyrians enjoyed killing the Israelites or, or depicting the fact that they killed many Israelites. Israel lived for many years with the Assyrians raiding their lands, killing their citizens. And they lived with many, for many years worried that the, that the Assyrian Empire would attack them and take their nation over as they had done with so many other nations around them. And as the Assyrian Empire grew, so did their capital city, Nineveh. In Jonah's day, Nineveh was considered a great city. It was one of the largest cities in the world. In Jonah's day, there were 120,000 people living in Nineveh. And a little historical note, Nineveh continued to be a huge, thriving city until 622 BC, or sorry, 612 BC, when the Babylonians and the Scythians <laughs> And the Persians and the Medes and the Chimerians all joined together and they sacked the city of Nineveh. And they continued, then they continued to wage war on the Assyrian Empire and the Assyrian Empire fell. So why was Jonah so against going to Nineveh and prophesying destruction? One, Jonah probably hated the Assyrians and wanted nothing to do with them. Two, Jonah was probably afraid to go to Nineveh and to preach there. I mean, you got, to think, you got to think that that sounds like a death sentence, doesn't it? Let's modernize it. That'd be like God telling you to go to Tehran, the capital city of Iran, and tell them that the God of Christianity has, has found them living sinful lives and are going to be destroyed. How well do you think that message would go over in Iran? What do you think they would do to you? That's probably how Jonah felt. You want me to go to the capital city of our major enemy and tell them that the God of the Hebrews is going to destroy them in 40 days? He probably saw it as a death sentence. And Jonah probably also did not want to go there because he did not want to give them a chance to repent. Let's be honest. Jonah probably wanted God to destroy Nineveh. That would be a great thing for the nation of Israel, wouldn't it? To have their enemy's capital city destroyed supernaturally by the God of the Hebrews. So those are some reasons why Jonah probably did not want to go to Nineveh. 
let me ask you, what was the result of Jonah's disobedience to God? I want to point out that Jonah's choice to disobey God, it put his life and the life of others in danger. Jonah's disobedience to God did not just impact him. It impacted the lives of others. All those people on that ship, they thought they were going to die in that storm. When you read this story, the men on this ship, they're scared. I mean, they are tossing cargo overboard to lighten the load so that the ship doesn't take on so much water. They are praying to their gods for help, and nothing is working. They cast lots because they realize that this storm, they, they, they feel this storm is not just a normal storm, that this was brought on by the gods. And they cast lots to see which person on the ship angered the gods, and, and the lots fell on, on Jonah. And then Jonah tells him, yeah, I'm running from my God. Because he told me to do something that I can't bring myself to do. And so I'm running from God. And Jonah tells them, they ask, what must we do to please your God? And Jonah says, throw me overboard. And then the storm will cease. Well, these men, they don't want to be murderers. They know if they throw Jonah overboard that he's going to die in this storm. And there's no way you could swim and survive and make it back to shore. And so instead of throwing Jonah overboard, what do they do? They, they start to row even harder, trying to row the ship back to shore. And after a while, they realize that rowing is useless. They're getting nowhere. And then they finally agree to do what Jonah tells them to do. And they pray to the, I love that they, before they throw Jonah over, they pray to the God of Jonah, it says. And they says, don't let us die for this man's sin. And please don't hold us accountable for what we're about to do. For this man's, don't hold us accountable for this man's death, they say. And then they throw Jonah overboard. And Jonah's disobedience, it eventually led to him being thrown overboard where he should have drowned. But God graciously spared his life by sending a large sea creature to swallow him. And then God also graciously spared the lives of everybody on that ship. Because as soon as they threw Jonah overboard, the scriptures say the storm ceased. It stopped. And everyone on the ship stood amazed at the power of the God that Jonah served. And it says they made sacrifices him and they followed him. Which I think is great. That even in the midst of storm and tragedy, some people come to know Jesus, come to know God and begin to follow him. But friends, we need to realize that our disobedience to God has severe consequences. Let's just take a stroll through some people in the Bible who disobeyed God and what happened as a result of that. When Moses disobeyed God, it led to him not being allowed to enter the promised land. When King Saul disobeyed God, it led to the Holy Spirit leaving him and then resting on David. And eventually it led to to, to Saul losing the kingdom and the kingdom being given to King David. When Jonah disobeyed God, you see it led to him being a huge storm and being thrown overboard and should have died and then eventually swallowed inside a fish or a sea creature. When the nation of Israel continued to disobey God, it led to their destruction and captivity in Assyria. This happened in 722 B.C., shortly after the days of Jonah. When the nation of Judah continued to disobey God, it led to their destruction and captivity in Babylon, which began in 586 B.C. These are just a few biblical examples of how disobedience to God results in negative consequences. And friends, we need to realize, too, that our disobedience to God has negative consequences. When we choose to disobey God's commands and sin, that sin separates us from God, and it leads to shame and guilt and the distance between our God and our Savior. 
When we disobey God's commands, it puts our lives on a path of pain and heartache and destruction. And if God tells us to help someone and we disobey, that person misses out on that aid. Or if God tells us to, uh, to help this family and we don't do it, then that family misses out on that aid. And they continue in their pain and their suffering and, and, and difficult times. And those people miss out on God's blessing because you were meant to be that blessing. God has blessed us to be a blessing to others. And when we don't obey the promptings of the Holy Spirit, people miss out on being blessed by God because we were supposed to be that blessing and we didn't do it. And if God tells you to share the good news of Jesus Christ with someone and you refuse, then that person may never hear the good news. That person may never repent of their sins. That person may never get on the path that leads to eternal life in heaven with God. And that person may spend eternity separated from God because you chose to disobey. Let that one sink in. Here's another example. The Bible tells us to gather for worship, right? In the book of Hebrews, it tells us, do not forsake the gathering of the saints. We are commanded to worship God. We are commanded to gather with our brothers and sisters in Christ for worship, for fellowship, discipleship, for serving, and many other things, for support and love and encouragement. But what happens when we choose to disobey that command? We choose not to go to church. We choose not to worship with God on a regular basis. We choose not to gather with brothers and sisters in Christ. Well, you miss out on worshiping God every week. You miss out on developing wonderful friendships with other believers. You miss out on growing in your faith. You miss out in, in joining causes that are bigger than you and, and working with your brothers and sisters in Christ to help solve these, situ these problems, to be a blessing to those communities. And to those people. And many of those people who choose to disobey God and choose not to worship God and choose not to, to be in fellowship with other believers, a lot of times they begin to stagnate in their faith or they begin to backslide. Why? Because they're disobeying God and disobeying God has negative consequences. And I'd also like to point out that their choices don't just impact them, it impacts others. If those people have children, then those children miss out on worshiping God. They miss out on developing a strong biblical faith. They miss out on, on making friends with other believers their age. They may never come to know Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, and then they suffer the consequences of their parents' poor choices. Because those parents chose to disobey God's command to gather to worship, to gather in fellowship and be in relation with other believers. Do you see how our disobedience can has negative consequences? And sometimes our disobedience impacts other people in a negative way as well. Disobedience to God's commands and disobedience to God's way of living always leads to negative consequences. It always leads to hurting ourselves or hurting others. It always leads off the path of right living and takes us down a path that leads to shame, regret, pain, destruction, and even death. That's why I want to encourage you today to be obedient to God's commands in the Bible. Be obedient to what the Holy Spirit prompts you to do. Obedience to God leads to internal joy and peace and blessings upon others. And it will eventually result in a reward of eternal life in heaven with God and the angels someday. Disobedience leads to pain, suffering, and an eternity separated from God. May we realize today, disobedience to God always leads to negative consequences. May we be wise and may we choose to obey God. May we choose to obey God's holy word. May we obey the teachings found in this holy book. And may we be, choose to be obedient to the prompting of the Holy Spirit. To do good and to be a blessing to others. 
Let us choose obedience over disobedience. Let's pray. Father God, we thank you for your holy word, and we thank you for the stories and the truths that are contained in it. As we begin to look at the life of Jonah, may we learn things that we can apply to our lives today. And today I pray that we realize that disobeying you has negative consequences. And those negative consequences may not just impact us, but they may impact our family, our friends, and, and impact other people around us. So God, help us to be wise. Help us to choose to obey you, to do your will, no matter how tough and how difficult it is. May we choose obedience and faithfulness, and may you reward us someday. May you reward us here on earth, and may you reward us someday in, he in heaven with the gift of eternal life with you someday. We pray this in Jesus' name. Amen. At this time in our service, we worship God as we receive the tithes and, tithes and gifts you offer today. These um, offerings support our building and staff, of course, and the programs of our church. Uh, they help us reach out into our community and even further than that. 2 Corinthians 9, 7 tells us each man should give what he has decided in his heart to give, not reluctantly or under compulsion, for God loves a cheerful giver. The ushers may come forth. Good morning, everybody. Well, I said before, I don't try to find songs to sing. They usually find me. And once again, this has happened. <laughs> but um, one of those long, cold, lingering winter days, I sat down, me and my wife, to watch a movie. And it was one of the ones on my list. I think it was on Amazon Prime platform. And it was called Seven Days in Utopia. And it was about a, a guy that was a pro golfer or semi-pro golfer. And his life was just deteriorating. He had a bad relationship with the father and things like that. And he decided to go to this place. He was told to like, go on a little retreat and go to Utopia. I think it was in Texas. And... Um, there he just realized that he kind of renewed his walk with the Lord, even though he didn't think he needed to, but it kind of just happened. And that's usually the way it does happen. But um, I wrote some notes down just real quick. It's like, you know, sometimes we go through something, addiction, uh, surgery, something life-threatening, um, bad relationships, and, you know, we come out renewed and... A lot of that, you know, we feel that it's because we have that walk with the Lord. Um, for me, at one point in time in my life, I was baptized when I was a baby. But about 13 years ago, I decided to ask my dad. I said, you want to baptize me again in the lake? And he was like, well, it's cold, but yeah, <laughs> you know. <laughs> so we did that, and I felt renewed, and it was just a another moment in my life that I was like, wow, I needed this, you know, just to be cleansed. Um, it's it's life-changing. It's It changes our hearts. Um, one quote that I have from another song called Born Again, which is the one I was going to sing, but this one's by the Gaither Band, and it was, one day I prayed to Jesus, take my sin away, born again. There's really been a change in me. Believe and be born again. And then one more, after Gabriel did the prelude this morning, I just felt like that you, you'd have a, a hipper walk of being born again into that heavenly sunlight, walking into heaven with 
people you haven't seen for a long time or just, you know, you know what I'm trying to say. But. So this is Born Again. It's by Third Day. I've never heard it before, but it's an older one. So to me, it's an oldie but a goodie. But uh, it was new to me at the time when I watched the movie. Well, today I found myself After searching all these years And the man that I saw He wasn't at all who I thought I'd be Well, I was lost when he found me here I was broken beyond repair then you came along and you sang your song over me it feels like i'm born again it feels like i'm living for the very first time for the very first Make a promise to me now Reassure my heart somehow That the love that I feel Is so much more real than anything I have a feeling in my soul And I pray that I'm not wrong that the life I have now it is only the beginning it feels like I'm born again it feels like I'm living for the very first time for the very first Looking for something that was more than what I had yesterday. Then you came to me and you gave to me life and a love that I've never known, that I've never felt before. It feels like I'm born again. It feels like I'm living. I'm living for the first time It feels like I'm breathing It feels like I'm moving For the very first time I'm living for the first time
for sharing your music with us this morning. Would you please pray with me? Heavenly Father, God of abundance, our hearts are full of gratitude for all who give willingly and generously. We ask for your richest blessings to be poured upon them and ask that you multiply these offerings and gifts to be used to further your work. In Jesus' name, amen. We're ending our worship today with uh, Crown Him with Many Crowns. It's on page 327. We'll be singing verses 1 through 4. Remember, there's a um, brunch in the fellowship hall following this service. But anyway, I'm glad you chose to worship with us again today. And I pray that we will crown him with many crowns. May we acknowledge God to be our king. And may we obey his commands, his decrees, his statutes, his precepts, whatever you want to call them. But may we be obedient to God. And may we be those faithful children of God and his faithful witnesses today and forevermore. Go in God's power and his love today and forevermore. Amen.